Now we're going to look at one of my favorite topics, which is actually electric circuits, which is also pretty simple. I'm also gonna give you some tips on what you need to look for and some guidelines on what the examiner is actually looking for. So the question I have now is from Junior Junior, and Junior's question says, we have a battery with internal resistance of one ohm. Remember, internal resistance is the one here. Most of the time, they're gonna draw this uh, dotted line here. In grade 11, we don't do this, but in grade 12, this is something new that they do introduce. And an unknown EMF is connected in the circuit as shown below. A high resistance voltmeter is connected across the battery, A1 and A2. These are our ammeters. They measure the current, which presents ammeters of negligible resistance. The first thing I always tell my learners is to actually look at your diagram and see what happens. I can see that my current will split into two, into the R ohm resistor, into the eight and the six. So my current will split, but then getting here, it's going to split again, which means that the current collectively at eight and six will be the current at 20. So which means the current that will pass through here or here, for instance, will be the total current of the system. Another thing that they bring in in grade 12 that will that most of the time actually guides most of your questions, my darlings, don't tell them I told you this, but you must always look at whether it's in parallel or series and to always keep in mind that resistors in parallel, the potential difference will be the same, right? So that is the key thing we always have to do in grade 12, whereas in grade 11, we have to calculate the total resistance within series on parallel and so forth. And in grade 10, it was much more uh, simple. But in grade 12, we usually are guided by the potential difference, where it is, where is it equal, and where do we have to add it? And then you can solve any electric circuit question or problem, I promise you. So let's look at our first question. So the first question says, with, with switch S closed, so if we close switch S, the current passing through the eight ohm resistor, I would always write down everything I'm given. The eight ohm resistor is five amperes. Now another thing you need to be careful with, sometimes they do give you a diagram that is open and then they ask you questions about it. Now remember, if the switch is open, you, you don't really have a lot of things that are actually happening there. So you must make sure they, the question does say that switch S is open or closed, right? Because you will get different readings whether it's open or closed. And then 9.1 says we must state Ohm's law in words. Exactly like the other problem, you are always guided by the definition that they will give you. In the previous one, they told us about uh, uh, principles of mechanical energy, and then the other question says, use mechanical energy principles only, right? So it's the same thing with Ohm's law. We have to state it. Remember, if you have to state a law, a principle, phenomena, and so forth, it always remains the same. It is something you need to know off by heart and obviously understand so that you can tackle any problem. But during the ad break, I actually wrote it down so that we don't waste time and we can actually move in through some of the calculations. But Ohm's law, it is the potential difference across a conductor is directly proportional to the conductor in the is directly proportional to the current in the conductor at constant temperature. So that is Ohm's law. Quick and easy. You do get several versions of how to do it. You can use whichever one your teacher has uh, taught you. Now 9.2 says calculate the reading on A1. Now A1 is the one here, right? We are looking for what will A1 be? Now listen to me. We already know the current that is passing through the 8 ohm resistor. If we can find the potential difference of the 8 ohm resistor, we know it will be the same potential difference of the 16 ohm resistor. How do I know this? Because when resistors are in parallel, the potential difference is then the same. Remember, resistors in parallel are current dividers, right? Potential difference will be the same in both the resistor. So which means if I can find the potential difference on this one, I can say it's the same as C, which means I can find the current at 16. If I add the current on the 8 ohm resistor and on the 16 ohm resistor, I will able to find the total current that will pass at A1. So I'm gonna work right um, next to me here. So step number one is to find the reading on A1. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna find the potential difference. I also like actually using or showing that I'm gonna find the potential difference on the eight ohm resistor so that the examiner knows what I'm doing. Remember the formula is IR. You do get this on your formula sheet. I am told that when switch S is closed, the current that passes through the eight ohm resistor is 0.5. The resistor is eight. 
Now this one is fairly easy, half of, 0 0.5 times 8, half of 8 is 4. So the potential difference on the 8 ohm resistor will then be 4 volts, which means I can therefore say the potential difference on the 8 ohm resistor will be equal to the potential difference of the 16 ohm resistor, which means it will also then be 4 volts. This is because resistors in parallel, the potential difference is the same, which means in the 16 ohm resistor, the potential difference is 4 ohms. I'm then going to take it further to say, if I'm looking for the current now on the 16 ohm resistor, remember you do get this formula off your formula sheet, I'm looking for the current, I just calculated my potential difference, which is 4, my resistance is 16. Okay, that I can't do in my head, so let's do this one here. I'm going to say 4 over 16, that will give me, no, I did a mistake there, let's find a fraction, 4 over 16, let's see what I get, I get 0 0.25. So the current that will pass through the 16 ohm resistor is 0 0.25. The SI unit for current is a capital A, a small a is acceleration, current is measured in amperes, which is 0 0.25. Now, which means I must find the total. How do I find the total? Now it's all about adding, but show the, the examiner that you're saying I total, which means the total current, what did we have? At the 8 ohm resistor, they told us if switch S is closed, it's 0 0.5 plus 0 0.25. Let's see what we do that. What we get there, plus 0 0.5, I get 0 0.75. So the total current, 0 0.75, the SI unit for current is amperes. So the total current that's passing through here at A is 0 0.75 amperes. That one was fairly easy. I think the only trick is you needed to find the potential difference on 8 and then use the laws of physics in, in electricity about potential difference. So let's look at our next question. So question 9.3 says, if device R delivers, delivers power of 12 watt, we must calculate the reading on A2. So we know the power that R delivers. We don't know what R is, but we must calculate the reading on A2. So this is how I would tackle a question like this. Let me actually go to another slide so that I can also work uh, right next to it. This is how I would tackle a question like this. I know that 8 and 16 are parallel to each other. Well, one thing you could do is find the total resistance and make this one resistor, right? which means that this resistor that we'll calculate here and the, and the 20 are now in series, but in parallel with the R. Again, what do we know about resistors in parallel? Resistors in parallel, the potential difference is the same. If I can find the total resistance of these resistors here on top, I know that the potential difference here will be the same as here. This is a rule we use in electric circuits because resistors in parallel are current dividers. So that is one way of doing it. I can then find the potential difference here and I know that it will be the same as the potential difference there. So now let's do that. That's how I'm going to tackle it. So step number one, remember to always show the examiner what you have. I'm just going to write R here. I like making a bubble. The power I will put is 12. That's what we must keep in mind. So I can say I'm going to calculate the potential difference on 20 because remember, if I can find the potential difference of this one, I can add it to that one, then I've got the total potential difference for the resistors at the top, which makes it in parallel with R. So the potential difference on the 20 ohm resistor is IR. Remember, how did I find my current? Let me just take all of that. It looks very untidy now. So how will I know the current that is passing through 20? We calculated it in the previous equation to say that the current at A1 will be 0 0.75 amperes. The current does not split when it goes through to 20. So the whole current of 0 0.75 will go through the 20 ohm resistor. So here on R, on I, I'm going to say 0 0.75. What resistor am I working with? The 20 ohm resistor. Let's see. Let's calculate that and see what I get. 0 0.75, multiply that by 20. And then I get 15. I get 15, the SI unit for potential difference is a capital V. Now remember what I have, I found the potential difference of 8 and 16 in the previous equation, I know that it's 4. So now I can say V parallel, the parallel total resistance, total, is equal 15, which is the one for the 20, plus 
the potential difference on 8 and 16 I know is 4. We found it out in the previous equation. 15 plus 4 I can do in my head, which is 9 volts. So the potential difference of these resistors here in parallel is 19 volts. We know resistors in parallel, the potential difference will then be the same. I can therefore say the potential difference for R, we don't know what R is, will also then be 19 volts. The rule is resistors in parallel. But they said we, that we have the power, I must calculate the current that's then going to move there. I then know that the formula, let me just use a different color and work on the side, that power is equal to VI. They've given me the power, which is 12. They've given me V, I've just calculated it, which is 19. And then I'm looking for my I. To find my I by itself, I divide both sides, oopsie daisy. I said my V is 12 here and not 19. It is 19. To find my I alone, I must divide both sides by 19. 19 divided by 19 is 1. I'm left with I by itself. Let me calculate what I have now. I therefore can say 12 divided by 19 will give me 0 0.63. The 1 does not change the 3. Remember to always put your answer in two decimal places. So the current that I get is 0 0.63. The SI unit for current is a capital A. Small a is acceleration. So this is then how we had to do this question. The only thing we needed to remember is that we can, if we can find the potential difference of these two in, in parallel, and this one in, is now in series with them, adding the potential differences for resistors in parallel will make it equal to this one. We therefore can find the current that will pass through R because we are given the power and using the laws of physics. So that is then our other question. So we found the, the current as 0, 063. So let's look at number 9.4. It says calculate the reading on the voltmeter when switch S is open. We just move to another slide so we can some more work on it. So we have switch S, which is open. We must find the reading on the voltmeter, which is the one here. So now, again, you can find various ways of tackling it. But we know we've got internal resistance. We've got the current that we have here. We found that we found the current passing through 20. We found the current passing through here. So therefore, this current here and this current here is the total current that will move through there. I know I can use my E, my EMF. So let's calculate that one if switch S is then open. So you can, you can actually do it like this. I actually have two ways of doing it. You can say V internal is IR. Now remember, the, the internal current, we find it in two ways. We found 0 0.75 for the current at the top on the 20 ohm resistor. On in this side, we calculated the current as being 0 0.63. My internal resistance is 1, so that is all multiplied by 1. Let's see what we get here. I therefore can say 0 0.75, close, ooh, minus plus 0 0.63, close my bracket. Let's see what I get there. I get 1.38. So here I get 1.38. The SI unit for potential difference is a capital V, but I'm not done. I'm going to say E, it is V terminal. You do get this in your formula sheet, V int. Remember, we found that the potential difference on this side is equal to that side. We found the potential difference to being 19 volts plus V internal, we just calculated it as 1.38. This I can do in my head, 19 plus 1 will give me 20. I still have decimals of 38 volts. The SI unit for my E is then a volt. So you could have also done it like this. And that was then for three marks. This was fairly, fairly easy. It was a nice question though. So I think, yeah, we've answered all the questions. The trick was to use the laws of physics and how to answer and how to move about the question.